How you feeling? Nice to meet you. It's cold in here. It's very fucking cold. And we're in Gulfport, Mississippi. I have no idea where we are. Can but you, we're can, definitely in Mississippi. Can you feel the energy of the slaves who used to be here? Of course. <laughs> They're everywhere. This is, you know, one of those places. So, new album. Yeah. What's it called? It's called Big Fish Theory. Why? What's that mean? In a compass of things. Being a larger than life and, you know, in a, in a smaller world, so to say. How rappers are perceived and perceive themselves to a certain standpoint. That they represent their community, that they are bigger than their community, but part of it at the same time. Nah, it's just that, you know, we at influence aside, but just it's a very, very unique perspective because a lot of people have these larger than life, you know, personalities and these overbearing senses of wealth and things like that, but aren't necessarily the majority. We're still, you know, large in our own right, even though we're kind of in a smaller facilitated space. Like, mm -hmm. They're still not even, you know, showing all the, you know, hip hop awards on the Grammys and things like that. But you still find these 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 great personalities and these great success stories within, you know, the small pond that is, you know, our music. I feel like there's not a distance with you. There's not like there's the guy on stage and then there's the real guy. I feel like there's there's less difference or there's no difference. I mean, you'll find you know, a lot of people that kind of situate themselves in a manner of of a character or a role throughout you know, the history of music. Yeah. You know, Cool Mo D wasn't necessarily a cowboy. Of so, you know, it's, just, it's, 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 something, it's something that's been, you know, constant and even outside of this genre. So as of now, you know, we have a couple of people that are, that kind of are telling their specific personal story and it's kind of getting a little bit more in that lane, you know, as time goes on. So I'm you know, just glad to be amongst that company. You know, the more you make music, the more you learn about yourself and the things that mean something to you. And I feel like if that wasn't something that was sensed throughout the music, then I would be missing something. Okay, so you're learning about yourself as you're making this stuff. What do you learn about yourself in making Big Fish Theory? I don't think this album was a, was a learning process itself as far as the creation of it, I just think it was a culmination of things I have been learning over the um, past few years and coming to an understanding is like, you know, oftentimes music becomes a coping mechanism for people. What are you coping with? I think everybody's coping with the same shit as life. You live a lot long life and you die. I suspect that you're coping with a lot of things that I and most people don't know anything about. I wouldn't say that. I just feel like, you know, it's just life. A lot of the times we don't look at people that we deem to be more important than us as, you know, human beings. We become just fixtures based on the things that we create or the things that we, um, we give the world. And those things kind of limit our ability to be looked at in a humane fashion. You know, everybody has the deals with the same stuff. It's not that many aspects of life to the point that we, you know, aren't all dealing with the same things. It's pretty basic. So what is the Vince Staples sound? I don't know. I don't think I've listened to enough Vince Staples music to um, <laughs> to uh, kind of dissect it. I think we still, we're still going. We, we're still making new things every day, you know. But I, wouldn't, I don't think I necessarily have one. It's funny because music... The creation of music is so, it's like to take something that you hear in your head and try to make it an actual thing. It never ends up how you how you imagined it, which it could be a good thing or a bad thing, but it's never exactly what it was. Right, you can never match the thing you were. Yeah, so I think you're just chasing that sound or that feeling or whatever it might be. And I think that's what keeps it you know, creative for the most part for most people is that you're constantly chasing something. So I couldn't necessarily say what that is until I feel like, you know, we've caught it. You move fast, right? Make a couple songs a day, take a couple weeks to make an album. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's fast because if we're going into the situation of recording, then everything for the most part is figured out already. And it's just about, you know, execution at that point. Like we'll have things written or we'll have production, or we'll have things written, we'll be looking for production and then we'll use that time to kind of hone in and fine tune certain things so so before you get to the studio 
you've already written out the song. Yeah, for the most part. How long does it take you to write out? What is the process of writing? It's it's never like a sit down type thing. I've never really sat down and decided I'm gonna write. When the spirit today. moves you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like it's just more along the lines of like when I when I think about it, I think about it. And it's I don't I can't really explain how it happens, but I don't know, I just wake up one day and I know what it's gonna be. Is it pen and paper? You type it into your phone or I know we're really working on trying to, you know, be ego friendly now. So we use the, you know, we use these telecommunication devices and things like that. So you type it into your phone. Yeah, we're not killing trees for the sake of that. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. You talk about being eco-friendly. So how far does that go in your life? Are you? It stops there. <laughs> just stops that's, there. that's exactly just, where. It's just stops trying there. to maintain yeah. the paper. Yeah. But um, then you eat the animals. Yeah, eat the animals. Drive whatever. Drive 91 gas. You know. What's the temperature at your house? Oh, it's always on the, 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 the full blast. Yeah, maybe the lowest we're going is like a 73, 74, 75. <laughs> on a hot day, we keep it tropical. That's very true. You know, high emissions vehicles. <laughs> very fast for no reason, even though, you know, cars that, you know, define the speed limit. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. But as far as paper goes, that's where we that's where we cut our corner. We got to Yeah, we got to Yeah. No, that I that's that's peace. I respect that. You know, you talk about living day to day and that was your existence that was your experience for a long time but now you've got a five-year plan you've got a 10-year plan that you're working on you've got a 15-year plan how has life changed even when you go from you know trying to get through day to day to like you know i got a plan i'm just i was just lucky enough to be put around people that knew what they were doing and you know cared about my best interests. i'm at this point now where i don't have to do anything but make songs and i prefer that I mean, you talk about, you don't, do you love hip hop? I mean, what does that mean? Like, what does what mean? Love or hip hop? What does do you love hip hop mean? I mean, like, you know, listen to the music, love the music, you know. I mean, like, you don't love the culture. I mean, that's what I'm saying. This, this, I understand this, this, that. This why I, it's not that. This is why I can't fuck with that statement. Because what people mean when they say that is, do you like the 10 people that I like a lot? If the fun said, do you love hip hop? Yeah, I love hip hop. I love Lil Boosie and Yo Gotti and Soldier Boy and yada, 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 yada. Niggas gonna be like, that don't count. Who won the Remy and Nicki beef? Shit is corny. The whole shit? Shit is fucking corny. Isn't beef a part of hip hop? It's fucking corny. Did you think the Cube NWA beef was corny? It's fucking corny. Jay-Z and Nas was corny? Fucking corny. Back to the beginning, was it KRS versus? Corny. Well, probably not corny because somebody actually got beat up in those. Oh, so if somebody gets beat up, then it's not corny. I'm not gonna go book studio time to talk about you. And you're like, you're this is this this is a part of hip hop that fans love. Fans that are... is traditionally part of hip hop. Go watch a smack battle. They're much better at it. King of the Dot. You have the UW League in New Jersey. So many battle leagues. Go watch some Charlie clips. I don't want to see people like demean one another for no reason when they can have a phone conversation. <laughs> Especially when they're actually successful musicians, not like a thing. There is battle rap, like I'm a fan of that, but as far as the spitefulness of it, because battle rappers are actually like all friends and they, for the most part, and they write it and they they have fun and talk about it on yeah. Facebook later, it's real fucking cute. But all that <laughs> other shit, they can no, get the fuck out of here. That shit is corny as fuck. It's like, I'm gonna say really hurtful things about you for the sake of hip hop. It's like, oh. What do you want that you can't get right now? What do we want, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> don't you know, hold on, Corey, don't you know what you want? I mean, I tell I tell him first though, so he probably knows something I said I wanted. Yeah, we gotta buy this house. For you or for mom? My mom's straight, I gotta, we gotta get a house. You got her a house? Yeah, she's straight. Did you get her a house before you got yourself a house? Yeah, I, don't have, I live in an apartment. You live in an apartment, yeah. but you got her a house. And she started, she cool. She got stairs and shit. Yo, w when you grow up with not that much, and then you come and buy mom a house, how's that feel? It was cool. She was happy. Come on, that's, that, you can't, you can't be like, yeah. That's nah, a big cool. deal, you took care of your mom. Like that's like the ultimate goal of the son, to like, I'm gonna take care of you. And you, you had that Denzel in uh, American Gangster moment. Mom, I bought you a house. 
Nah, that's different though. We don't got like a drug money house. <laughs> but got, you bought we, her a house. Yeah, we got a cool house. But she got stairs. So you know, you gotta invest in yourself. You gotta invest in your home. Cause if your kid, if the kid walks in the house and is like, "Damn, this shit is fly. Our parents love me." No, I don't want to smoke meth with y'all after school. <laughs> Have you been to my house? That's just how I feel. If you give the kids an environment to where they like, I would never, you know, drink vodka with you fucking bum ass children and then go lay in my house. I have a Casper mattress and it's beautiful in here. Because I'll tell people all the time, if somebody can walk in your house and not feel like they have to take their shoes off, you're not doing it big enough. Oh, right, 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 right. If they don't feel like I might mess something up, then they don't need to be there. If if they should walk in your house and feel like they, they, they I gotta take off my shoes. They just need to ask, oh, do we do this? Are we doing shoes off? You could be like, no, you can keep the shoes on. Right. But they need to know that. But the gonna, look says maybe I should take my they shoes. They gotta off. know that maybe it's some shit going on in here. So what what makes you wanna get out of bed and go do shit? I mean, like I know, like when I'm tired. I got out of bed because I got to take care of my kids. What, you know, when you're tired and like, I don't really want to get out of bed, but like, what propels you? What else would I be doing? Sitting in the house playing video games. You got to get one. <laughs> what do you, you mean like, you like get a PS4 Pro and turn the lights off and play like some Resident Evil or some shit like that. You're not, you're not going to have a good day. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> So why do you do it if it's not a good day? If it's stressing you, you out, do it. you pay sixty dollars for this shit. You gotta get through it. Why did you pay sixty dollars for it if it's gonna stress you out? Because I didn't know it was gonna be like that. <laughs> I just be I be at the GameStop hanging out, and I was like, "What's up, bro?" He gave me a little slap and dap. And I was like, "What's new?" He was like, "Oh, get Resident Evil and get Final Fantasy." I was like, "I'm not gonna play Final Fantasy. Whatever." Got it. Played it for like ten minutes. Turned it off. Turned out Resident Evil, and then the motherfucker chopped my hand off. But it's, it's highly addictive because you got to get out of that fucking house. Do tell me you didn't lose that with the train? You guys got to throw it in there with the train. <laughs> Trust me. I'm really good at these kind of things. Have you guys seen my music videos? Yo, your videos are crazy, though. I have good judgment. Trust me. Are yeah. you, your videos are really extraordinary. Thank you. Um, I mean that. I mean, they're like little movies, you know, and you approach it, it, it vis the um, the senorita mm -hmm. was blowing me away. The way you had the brother walking, and then and then just sort of you know the camera flows with you, and it's not like lots of cuts, and it doesn't look like a normal video. I hate camera cuts. I hate camera cuts. Camera cuts are so tacky. Yeah. What I've gotten from this whole situation is kind of what keeps me going day to day, and we have obligations. I was taught growing up that you have to fulfill your obligations. But who are you obligated to? Nobody. I'm just obligated to keep my word. If I say I'm going to be here at 8.30, I have to be there at 8.30 because I said I was going to be there. Right. I could have said no. Right. You know, you're really good at not judging, right? And Prince was like that. Like, he would be like, the album is not good or bad. It is, right? And you keep saying things like that, there's no positive or negative, there just is. Where's that come from? Where's it start with you? I honestly couldn't tell you, but I've, I've never really been the type to want to judge things. Like, which is funny because that's what people ask me to do countlessly, but not in this sense, but like in a, Vince Staples writes the top 10 things he doesn't give a fuck about <laughs> our website. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I just feel like it's, life is perspective based to me for the most part. So your perspective can change everything. If you have the wrong perspective, it can fuck you. If you have the right perspective, it can put you in a very good place. We were on the plane going to London and we saw the Amy Winehouse. He told me not to, Corey told me not to watch it. The Amy documentary. <sighs> that was powerful. Yeah, I'm not fucking with that at all. What, you're not fucking with what? Like any of those people. Like new people, anyone in, in anyone in that movie who did some crazy shit, I'm not fucking with none of them. Like, well, the tragic thing is that she got fucked most by her dad, mm. and then she's about to get out of the shit, out of her addiction maybe, and here comes her boyfriend, breaking into rehab. Here's some more heroin. Don't you actually love her? No, not really. But yeah, I watched that. I was like, this is fucked up. 
but it kind of happens all the time in music. And it's the biggest disservice isn't the family. The biggest disservice usually is the fans. Because when you make the biggest disservice is the fans. Of course. What do you mean? You expect your family and everyone around you to start acting weird because they might see your car and they've been inside your house. Your fans, you can tell your fans everything about you and who you are and where you come from and all your problems. And as soon as they feel like it, they'll use it to, you know, to hurt your feelings. And they'll Don't use... your fans love you? Do they? Isn't that what it means to be a fan? That I like you. Then what happened to Michael Jackson? And what happened to Amy Winehouse? Well, Amy Winehouse got screwed her. by her family. But but what does her family have to do with, you know, the media calling her crackhead and her fans booing her and throwing shit on the stage? And what well, wait a minute. The, the fans booed her because they did not get what they expected. Yeah, but right? so? So? Uh, what do you mean, so? I mean, so is when you go to Target and you like your groceries, your bags, bag specific way. And you tell the lady, hey, can you double bag that? And she forgets to. Or she doesn't seem like she's paying attention. You might look at her kind of crazy. But then you might look at their face and be like, you know what? They're probably having a bad day. She's right. You run into people with jobs all the time that might not perform to the best of their abilities all the time. But usually we take into consideration their current mind state, their current the things that they're currently going through. We do it all the time. Sure. We always look at people and say, oh, man, I, I, I wonder what's going on with them. They don't seem like they're having a good day. But we don't do that for artists. Ever. So That's I don't, true. I don't fucking care about any of that. As, I, don't, I don't care if Amy Winehouse came to her show drunk and was having a bad fucking day. If anyone else went to work drunk, we'd be like, damn, there's some shit going on with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. I mean, I get into this about, around Lauryn Hill all the time. People, why is she late? Why is she this? Why is she that? Lauren has five kids plus other things going on in her life. She's a real person, right? Yeah. Vince is a real person. I think the fans, if they pay a twenty dollars for a ticket to see you perform, they should get at least an hour of music. They should get, and I, I completely agree with that because I'm all about making your commitments. But my whole thing when things like this happen is, have you ever heard their music? Because if you're a fan and you hear the music of these people that we speak about, they clearly have a lot of problems. And I, I've never understood why you would want to compile that with, you know, I wouldn't say slander, but it gets to that point sometimes when, when they clearly need the opposite, which will probably help them. The love and acceptance. Yeah. You think about... Um... Being a parent one day? Yeah, I guess. I don't think about it, but Corey has a baby. Your manager. So, so it's just a communal baby. We hang out with her. She's great. We can't She's get one? Yeah, we're about to be two right now. What does that tell you about life and who you want to be that now you have this, this, this baby in your life? Somebody gonna have a baby eventually, so it's always a baby running around, so I'm not, you know, really in that much of a rush because I could always just go to the homie house if we sure. need, you know, to hang out with, 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 with a Tyler. But, um, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, life is a beautiful thing. Kind of refocuses your purpose and your values and things like that, so it's a good thing to see. Oh, it definitely refocuses the purpose and the values. Do you think about how you would raise your shorties different than the way you were raised? Nah. I think I was raised really well, honestly. I can never think about raising my kids how I was raised because I have more money than my parents had when they were raising me. I have more opportunity than my parents had when they were raising me, so it'll never be the same. But as far as the lessons I was taught in the way that my family decided to keep me from certain things, I, I have very good parents. And I mean, all of them, from my grandparents and my mother and my father, not even all the parts that my sisters and brothers played in, you know, raising me up. I, I feel like I had a very good parent. So if I was able to establish the kind of relationship that I had with my parents, with my children, teach them the lessons that I learned without them having to struggle, I think I'd do an amazing job because they did an amazing job with nothing. So I would be lucky if I was able to raise them how my parents raised me. And your grandfather, uh -huh. your grandmother, Oh yeah, that's I, all of them. It's like I, I counted my parent group. Yeah, my mother, my father, and uh, their parents while they were here. 
Tell me about your grandfather. I know he meant a lot to you. Hey, Where yeah. is he in you? What did he tell you that sticks with you? He didn't talk much. I don't think. I honestly don't think he's ever told me anything that was like one of those sit down and let's talk by the lake, Andy Griffith bullshit type thing. <laughs> nah, but you know, sometimes people think, drop a little wisdom. Nah, he wasn't that kind of person. He just one thing where he just lived his life. You know, he, did, he did right by people. He was a good guy. I think that means more than anything you could say. It was like he he lived a um, lived a respectable life, you know, despite all the things that he had to deal with. What about your mom? Where is she and you? What'd she teach you? Oh, uh, a lot. That's the homie. I saw her a couple days ago. She taught me everything I know, basically. What does she think about this star Vince that has emerged? No, she probably think it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. We won't really talk about it. She's happy though. I could I could, you know, comfortably say that. What does she want you to do, like with your life that you're like, I don't know about that mom. She doesn't want me to do anything. She lets you do whatever. My mom's never told me to do anything. Never pressured me to do anything. Never had any plans for me. She wants her kids to be happy and healthy. That's all she really cares about. Besides that, we can do whatever we want. Which is probably not a good thing for the group of children that she had. <laughs> but it's a great philosophy in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But yeah, she's cool. What about your dad? How'd he influence you? He has to learn from his mistakes. He tried hard though. Just didn't really pan out well for him, but he tried hard. But he's in a difficult situation, right? I mean, the DAC is stacked against him already, right? Mm, yeah, the DAC is stacked against everybody for the most part, where we come from. Yeah. Yeah. He figured it out, though. He stayed out of trouble for a little, for a little bit, it's been a minute, so that's good. It's good for him. I'm happy for him. So what do you learn watching him make that journey? Uh, it's probably why I don't do drugs and I love bullshit, but... I don't have to really think about that, but I mean, you learn something from everyone. So I don't, I will never take that away from any of the people that, you know, were in my life. I could have learned something from the neighbor across the street or learned something from someone I met once or twice or had one conversation with. So there's always something to learn within the people that you surround yourself with. What does your community need? And I know you're trying to help giving back to the kids, the community center that you're, you know, that you're part of, the Long Beach YMCA. What does your community need that you can uh, help them with? They need a community. We don't have a fucking community. We got apartment buildings. Right. And a couple high schools, and we got a jail. Right. That's what everybody has. Everybody has a police station, and everybody has a county building. Everyone needs a sense of community or a sense of belonging or a sense of identity. It's a bunch of people walking around with no identity and no. You talk about like an African concept of like we are together, we are a neighborhood. It's not even just black people. It's like Mexican people have the same problems we have, and where I live, the white people have the same problems we have, and you know we have a large Pacific Islander and Southeast Asian community, and they have the same problems we have. It's just just give them all money or something. But you've talked about you have your family of multiple generations of being in the gangs. I mean, but that doesn't mean anything where I come from. Because everybody it's culturally the... it's culturally about surrounding areas and neighborhoods. It has nothing to do with anything. It's not that deep. You don't right. have to be right criminal to live in a certain it's like if you live in California, you're deemed a Californian. Right. It's that simple. Right. It's you like, live in this area, you're Yeah, it's not that it's simple. not something you sign up for, you no, you leave the house, you're in it. It's not boys in the hood. That movie's is so inaccurate, it's crazy. <laughs> It's so horribly inaccurate. Is there any movie that came close? Nope. Menace to Society, kind of. Only because everybody died. But what are they, what are they, I mean, since they are so endemic to the community, what do they provide to the community? Uh, nothing. They're just, they're just people. Structure. No, not, not, none of that shit is true. No, they're just people. They live over here. This is what this area of the city's called. That's what it's called. That's 99% of what it is. It was some shit a long time ago. It's not anymore. It just means you live over here. It's not that deep. It, you're saying that it's not what it used to be. Gangs are no gangs. Motherfuckers are going to fight. Yes. That's it. Tribal and six of human beings. Yes. These people and these people are going to have disagreements. They're not going to get along. And as humans, it's in our nature for things to, you know, yes. for conflict to happen. So 
Yes. That has nothing to do with it. gangs or whatever. There are places without gangs that have high crime rates and Absolutely. all this other type of shit. So it doesn't really mean much. It's just it's 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 an it's I it's an identifier for the most part. Because if you come from a certain place, you don't got to be a gang member to talk a certain way to do certain things. It's all based on this locational. Right. Several years ago, people were talking about it's less intense. It's less, you know, th there was a time when it was wild and it's less difficult now. You know what I mean? Is that accurate or not really? No, it's just um, it's easier to go to jail. Now. It's camera phones. It was a point in time you could shoot a motherfucker. Somebody saw you that to run to the payphone, go to the payphone, call mm. 911. 911 had to co call dispatch. Dispatch come tell the car to come. It was no street cameras, no cell phones, no nothing. Of course, it looked crazier at that point in time. It was more going on because it was less likely to get caught. The fact people are still dying and it's a 90% chance you're going to get caught just shows that no one cares. They were probably much smarter than we were as mm. far as how they maneuver and did things like that. So, and does this contribute to the- And they think they so fucking smart too. Ah, oh, fucking hate the cops. I think they so fucking smart. It's like, shut up. We know you kids. You, you kids got C's and you want to beat people up. No. Ah, oh, fucking hate cops. You know who I like? I like detectives. Why? When the detectives show up, it's some other shit. Excuse me, why? The detectives like, the detectives pull up, and they look at you like, we know exactly what happened, but we can't prove it, so we go see you later. And I respect that stance. That's a good stance to have. As opposed to? As opposed to we gonna beat you up and make you walk home. And that's how the cops are. Yeah, it's a different thing. Our detectives, our detectives be on some shit. They pull up in t-shirts, a little badge hanging like NYPD blue. Yeah. It's real cute. Like they got their whole little, their little routine. It's cute. I respect the detectives. <laughs> But there, you know, but the whole sense that you that you paint is a community that's being occupied. Yeah, I guess. It's, it just depends, man. It really depends. Like it's very specific. When was the last time you got beat up by the police? I never got beat up by the police. You got hit? Hell no. I you turned it on. Yes, thrown, sir. No. Thrown yes, on sir. a car. No. Yes, sir. No, sir. How you feeling today? <laughs> what are we doing? Okay. Let's go. Or less, let me go home. I'm not, I don't do all that with the police. I ain't still, my mama whoop my ass if the police beat me up. She'd be like, what did you do? <laughs> this is a lot worse to go. Oh my God, you're talking about like, they know who are the disposable people. And the notion of like, there being disposable people is insane to me. Cause six years ago, you would have been considered one of the disposable people. Absolutely. And we see the level of talent and what you can bring to the world you were not as, and how many of them could have provided something to the world, but they were treated as disposable? And that's the reality of the situation. But isn't that fucked up? Doesn't that piss you off? That's your people getting treated like shit. What do you want to see us do to combat that? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that person.